Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox, this time in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1 because this is where I keep my planes. And we have the XB-70 Valkyrie, which I made in a series of Blender videos and also explained how to import it into Kerbal Space Program. And now we're going to test it. Of course I've already tested it a little bit, but we're, I haven't landed it or anything, I just made sure it could take off. And that was a struggle because it kept leaning to the right, not dissimilar to how the Rutan Boomerang was leaning to the right. And I figured out that the way I make the planes, uh, the Ferrum Aerospace aerodynamic model doesn't like it. Now that's all right. That doesn't mean that Ferrum Aerospace is not operating. Uh, it means that there's a, there's a module by default called lifting surface. And with that, that works. But there's also a separate far aerodynamic model that you can make for the wings and all of that business. You have to do that if you want to use this data and stability derivatives thing. If you want to actually check out your plane using this, you have to have the FAR aerodynamic model in, I think. And so none of this makes any sense right now. The, For instance, the reference area for this plane is much bigger than 39 meters squared. The cord and span are definitely not 2 meters. And so, yeah, all of this is completely wrong. And so, yeah. But I found that when I tried to add the, the module, uh, that particular module to the plane and get rid of the stock module, of course, before doing so, uh, it kept going to the right for some reason. And I didn't understand why, especially since it can, it, it was stable in stock. So anyway, uh, so I removed that uh, special far aerodynamic model, which means I can't use this information. It's called XB70S because I previously used, uh, made an XB70 with uh, other parts, not obviously my own custom body. So yeah, I just call it S for super, I guess. So I'll, I'll wait for it to settle down a bit. Let me apply the brakes. As usual, the center of mass is just in front of the main landing gear. So it's very close to being able to rotate, as you can see. Otherwise, uh, it would not be good. So it's good that it's close to being able to rotate. So um, apparently this NASA logo and uh, the serial number aren't on the inside of those. I'll have to fix that along with other things, but it's not too bad. Uh, the animation for the outer wing surfaces works and it has a collider, as you can see. Um, so that's good. These engines should be the right engines. General Electric YJ93s to the right specs. And our mass, I guess we could uh, get some vessel info out here. Our mass is currently uh, 153 tons, which as you can see is a small fuel load. It's uh, only 20% uh, fuel load right now. Okay, so with this now settled, I'm going to throttle up SAS on. Actually, I won't throttle up all the way because, you know, it's got afterburners. We'll just go to like afterburner step one or something. start trying to rotate and it's off good landing gear a little bit wiggly I don't know about those shadows razor edge shadows it is missing a couple of control surfaces that would be on the tilting portions of the wings. Ooh, we seem to be side slipping a little bit. Um, because you can't add stuff to parts that are animated. So, well, that's complicated with the robotics parts. If I could uh, figure out how to turn this into a robotics part, then maybe, I don't know. Never understood how those robotics parts were were able to do what they do, the Magic Smoke Industries. Well named, by the way. Uh, very appropriately named since I still have no idea how it manages to do what it does. And then the, there's the stock robotics parts. Well, of course, with the stock robotics parts now, it's not quite so magical, but... 
I should probably add a bump map to this. It's obviously way too smooth and there's lots of things that I could do with it, but I'm more of a quantity versus quality kind of guy, to be honest. I should check the interior. We had just used the Mark III cockpit. Well, it's sort of clipping the body a little bit, but it's not too bad. But again, I just uh, sort of threw in the Mark III cockpit. So... For that, it's looking pretty good. And that's why we positioned the body in Blender so that uh, the zero, 0 point was up here, so that basically the Mark III cockpit would automatically go there. So my uh, current problem is that I have trouble breaking the sound barrier. We'll see how it goes this time. And uh, it'd be easier if the far aerodynamic model was applied, I think. But basically all this information is nonsense right now. There's no way the lift or drag are that low. And you can also tell that uh, it's lying, it's basically lying about the lift and drag because if we only really had 8 kilonewtons of drag when there's 83 kilonewtons of thrust from each of these engines we'd be accelerating way faster than we are now. I don't know, maybe there's some vector I have to apply to the plane like a lift vector so, or the, each of the plane parts so that far is happier with it. I don't know. I don't know why I was rolling to the right. So if I put the far aerodynamic model on, of course it can do the numbers, but then it persistently has uh, has an issue regardless of where I put the center mass and center lift. Mark numbers, right? Uh, here's transonic drag for you. I mean, this plane should just punch right through, to be honest. And again, if we take a look at the drag, it's increased because of transonic drag, but it's nowhere near what it really is. I mean, since we're coming close to a standstill on our acceleration, the real transonic drag right now is 86 times 6, exactly counterbalancing the thrust of the engine. So maybe more on the order of 500 kilonewtons, six, uh, between 500 and 600 kilonewtons. You might be curious to see the, I mean, I don't think we're going to be able to get out of the transonic region, but you may be interested to see the wing tilt in action. And oddly enough, it increases our drag. Um, it should decrease our lift as well, we'll see. Let me just activate it. Well, that definitely increased our drag. And I don't know what to say about the lift, to be honest. Let's go back. It, it did decrease our lift, but only just a little bit. Uh, 56 it says now for the drag. Or maybe it was just consistent, I don't know. It has a collider on it. I don't know what it's doing. Hey, let's try F12. I, well, okay, I don't even see a drag thing on this. Oh, they're the little ones, but only on those control surfaces. There's something weird about this. There's something weird about this. There's got to be drag, otherwise we'd be accelerating. But it doesn't seem to be showing it. Yeah, I have no idea. Well, maybe if we turn, there'll be more drag. Let's turn back to the airfield. I don't know. Oh, the, well, well, but that's just that was just the control surfaces. Anyway, so it's a peculiar thing. I have no idea what's going on. At least it can take off and fly around a bit. 
but I don't know why I have that problem with the fire dynamic model with it uh, flopping to the right on takeoff. What gets me is the inconsistency. Either we have not much drag, which is fine, or we have a lot of drag and we can't break the sound barrier. It can't be both, <laughs> darn it. It can't be that we have very little drag and we can't break the sound barrier with these engines given the vessel mass. That's not, that shouldn't be allowed. The empty mass of this is 115 tons. Its max takeoff weight is 245 tons. So... Yeah, I mean, we can see the surface thrust to weight ratio. Unless these engines are woefully underrepresented, but it's the stats for them is uh, 89 kilonewtons dry and 120 kilonewtons of afterburner, so it seems to be right. At altitude, 120 kilonewtons with afterburner ends up being around, uh, ends up being 80-ish. And we can see the max thrust here is 747 kilonewtons. Well, that's basically 120 times 6, isn't it? A little bit more than 120. So the thrust of the engines is correct. So now we're getting, well, there's still a little bit of idle thrust from the engines, 3.9 kilonewtons apiece. Well, it sure looks good. Now, if I could make it work right, that'd be great. I prob should probably add some air brakes somehow. I don't know where its air brakes are. It could possibly use these uh, back flapper on things. Attaching the engine's a little bit of trick. I made a minor mistake with the collider. And um, also the the engines these engines are too short so I had to add a little bit of a tank there basically to extend them but the collider goes a little bit too far like it's about here-ish and so I can't click on the tank right now without like getting the camera into the collider to click on the tank it's complicated we're really high. Well, okay, let's see what happens. It's got sort of a yaw thing going. Okay. Nope, go, 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 go. I didn't notice this dimple in the body before. I think I should probably fix that. Okay, well, it's not getting too much slower than this. This is still ridiculously fast for landing, of course. Uh, the landing gear agrees. You could tell. Oh god. <laughs> okay, I don't think I'm gonna be able to get it down in this episode. Um, I'm gonna put the parts in the video description. <laughs> and uh, you can see if you can put it together and land it maybe I don't know um, it it can take off in stock but I don't know how well it flies in stock I, uh, especially if you don't have the b9 procedural uh, control surfaces so that's up to you to figure out but I did verify that I could take off so uh, with that I'll say Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.